set, go. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. My name is Mackie. And I... And, and my daddy draws characters because my daddy's handsome because he's the one to yeah. draw characters because he's the one and this is my sister and me yeah. and daddy. He, and I'm having two more fun. Is that all? No, and talk to. Oh, talk to? Um, well, this caricature is of Whoopi Goldberg, and I'm going to try something a little bit different. Um, you can, as you can see, I'm starting with my normal thumbs, thumbnail sketches, uh, just to kind of get a feel of the face. And um, by the way, see see that next sketch that I'm doing right there? All those crazy little lines. Um, I, I recently started doing that, but I, I kind of picked that up from um, Gilbert Delroy, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Those weird, crazy lines, sometimes they work out. Uh, you might want to give it a try. What you do is you hold the pencil uh, as far as you can from the lead, and you just kind of start doing these weird, real light, by the way, real light lines, real crazy, uh, not abstract, but just depending on your style. I'm, I'm talking about just the real loose lines. Um, and then somehow, um, spontaneously, these features... Uh, I guess will appear some somehow, but you have to of course draw those crazy lines in light of what you see. Uh, so if you you know draw your regular style, but do it in a way where you're really really loose. Your your lines are real um, loose. They're not so tight. Um, and and then somehow when you're doing those loosey lines, as you can see, I'm doing it again right there. All those weird lines. Somehow you'll find a line that you like within those lines. And then you'll you'll darken the ones that you like. You might want to just give it a try. It's probably easier just to do it than to explain it. But give it a try. Um, if you're familiar with um, Gilbert DeRoy stuff, uh, when he starts off, well, I guess when he posts up, posts his whips and stuff, uh, they look real messy, don't they? They look real messy and real, you know, um, loose. Uh, but I, th I think I'm not sure that's why he does it. But I think the reason is. Uh, it's it's it kind of allows him to kind of uh, be real loose and then to see the features within that those those lines those weird uh, fast lines so those lines are kind of um, and there's another word but basically they're accidental those lines uh, and then you you just kind of pick pick which line works best um, from that mess mess of lines or that line full of mess there but if if that if that does help you you might want to give it a try. It did help, and um, I, I was able to do that a, a few days ago too. I just kind of tried it out, and it worked out really well. Uh, but just kind of be real messy with it, and then just kind of um, go into and, and see which lines, which one of those lines work as as much as they are. There are many lines, but you'll be able to pick some from that mess that you created. Um, I call that crazy line sketching, but. Um, one thing I wanted to mention also is when you're sketching, when you're doing your thumbnails, turn the page around, turn turn it around, um, and see like for example, as you can see that thumbnail is facing downward, like her lips, but if you tilt it upward, you could have her lips kind of going up. Um, so I don't know if you ever do that, but try to try to turn the page and see if it looks better tilted upward a little bit, uh, and that works really well with profile caricatures, just kind of tilting the page and. If it looks better with the lips tilted upward, uh, just trace it over again and just change the position of the neck um, and the hair, of course, because the gravity pulls it downward. You'll need to change the hair. Um, but I do that sometimes. Uh, as you can see, I'm starting with the, uh, I'm going to do a little sculpting. I just felt like doing um, some sculpting from Michael's stuff. He does a lot of sculpting and um, he kind of inspired me to do some sculpting. And one of the, uh, the mistakes I made, probably the worst mistake, uh, of 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 my life, but um, was the skipping out on the uh, sculpting class that they had. They, they were teaching you how to uh, sculpt uh, caricatures out of, I guess, clay and and wire and things like that. Uh, but they did that at the last convention, uh, the caricature convention, and uh, it was in Texas. And uh, this one will be in November. 
this year's convention but they had a class and I just skipped out on it I just totally big mistake and I, I, I will be going to it again if they have it the, the, the sculpting one that is but they have tons of workshops but uh, I, I will try to attend um, the next one but um, let me see but I'm sculpting basically with um, I, the last month or so or two I've been saving uh, these needle erasers, nettle. I'm, it's it's pronounced. Uh, I'm not. I don't know what's pronounced. How it's pronounced, but it's spelled K N E A D, E D. So it's kind of like kneaded rubber erasers. Prismacolor makes them, but when they get real dark, they basically absorb all the pencil lead. I'm sure you you're familiar with them, but when when they start to rub off, when you start to erase and they start to make marks themselves on the paper, that's it's time to kind of get rid of it. So and when it gets really black. That kind of tells you too when to get rid of it uh, when it gets real dark because it absorbs all the the lead and stuff. But um, this is two two packages of kneaded erasers that I I wasn't going to be using anymore. I was going to toss them, and if I knew I would be using it to sculpt, I would have saved the ten years worth of needle kneaded erasers. Um, but they're they're very uh, useful to uh, move and sculpt with. From my experience, this last few hours I think it took this whole thing took about two hours worth so I guess hour of sketching an hour of sculpting and it just feels like it was much longer and I think it was I think it was but because there were some parts that didn't get recorded um, but it was a lot of fun but these these used ones they have uh, a lot of lead in them already and they have uh, a lot of oil from your hands so I don't know if that made a difference but it was very it was um, it was easy to easy to sculpt, easy to move around, um, and uh, when I when I painted over it, I thought it would do something because I used acrylic. I thought it would like splot or or I thought it wouldn't paint right. There'd be some spots, but it it seemed to do fine, uh, as you'll see towards the end. Um, but I kind of just started off with uh, like doing everything in pieces, so. Uh, what I would recommend if you want to sculpt, start from the bottom and work your way up. One thing I, I came in um, across, one of the problems I came across was I started from the forehead and I went down. So I kind of got all the pieces together and then I tried to bring them all together and they all came apart. Like it just didn't work out well. And so I, what you want to do is start off with the base. You find find a good base and what I'm using. I use I used one of those ink bottles, those containers that hold ink. It's from I think it's called Higgins, but it's just those black Indian ink bottles, and I use that as a base. And I just stuck the neck, I stuck the neck onto that top, and then um, I worked my way upward. I had the jaw, and then I had the, the the lips and things like that. So I worked from bottom to top. Um, but a good base is important too. Um, at the very end, I try to take a better picture than what I had. And the whole thing fell over. The glasses fell down, and everything. Was, the paint was still wet, and it just, it was destroyed. So I just, um, the moral of the story is to make sure the base is real set. It's it's situated. And it's heavy, and there's no way that it could fall over. Um, but anyways, as you can see, what I'm using, my tools I used, was one of those pocket knives. It was a it was a Christmas gift my wife gave me. It's a Bear Grylls one, but it has like tweezers. It has like a few different knives and little bit little cool little tools that I use to kind of sculpt around to get all those details and stuff. Uh, but I, I guess a small knife would work, but majority 90, 80 percent of it was with fingers, just fingers and fingernails and but those little small areas like the eyes like there, I use the those little um, knives and stuff that are in those tool things. but um, Everything was basically, it was real new to me. I haven't sculpted since middle school. And uh, then, you know, you, you use that, those, uh, what are those firing things, those ovens that kind of fire the clay and gets hard and stuff. But I will be buying clay. I, I really I really enjoy it, but um, I, I just use this leftover eraser. And it, I guess it worked out okay. And I was actually able to uh, wash off the acrylic as much as I could. And then I just stretched it, and it got back to normal. So I'm, I'll probably be using it again if I get more um, erasers. I'll, I'll um, I will add to my collection. And I'm, the sculptor, the sculpting stuff that I do next time, I think will be a little bigger. Uh, the hardest part was, um, uh, what I would say, was with the glasses. You'll see in a little bit. I'm gonna make Whoopi's glasses. Uh, 
because you had to make those round perfect circles and the frames were made out of the kneaded eraser and uh, and then I added like these I had added uh, scotch tape so that it looked like glass uh, I, I you had to cut them out and I used the tweezers for that too uh, to hold the tape and it was just frustrating getting back and forth because it was sticky on one side and it would fall and it, then it got it got some oil on it and it wasn't clear anymore and, uh, anyway so um, some of the tools that I use, I use the, um, as I already said, the kneaded rubber eraser. Prismacolor makes that. You can find that from what I hear at Hobby Lobby too, those erasers. Um, a pocket knife uh, with all those tools. I use some acrylic painting, uh, acrylic paint, just regular acrylic paint. I use scotch tape for the uh, for the eyes, the glasses. The um, I use scissors to cut those, of course, the scotch tape. Um, let me see. Uh, the base was the ink container and then I added some water at the very very end I added some water over the whole thing I just kinda touched a little layer of water uh, over it so that way that way it looked a little glossy when I went ahead and took the picture uh, because when the acrylic dried it didn't look glossy anymore it just kinda it, it got uh, like, what do you call it dull it just looked real dull and, and plain and flat um, but as you can tell also there this is a um, it's a better quality video because I got a new camera uh, my friend, good buddy AJ Jensen, uh, he's going to be coming to the convention. Uh, so you'll meet him there too, but he's, he's real big on YouTube and he does a lot of caricatures also on, on YouTube. Um, but he, he sent me his camera and he gave it to me. So I'll, I'll be able to, I'm using his camera as you can tell. And uh, I'm just trying to, trying to get used to it. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on there I'm not familiar with. I had to move it back real far and then zoom in and... I don't know. It, it's it's a lot of stuff that I just kind of practiced on today, um, and the coloring too. I'll have to apologize. It's going to switch over in a little bit, and it's going to look real yellowish. But I was just kind of testing out the features on the camera. Um, but I used, as you can tell right there, I used a lot of. I use sometimes. I used a um, was a. I used the mechanical pencil. I used it like as a needle. I guess you could use a needle. Uh, to get all inside those details, but I'm not a sculptor. I mean, I, I'm not sure what they use, but I'm sure they use like little needles and knives and stuff like that. I wasn't able to like shave off anything uh, like you normally would on clay. On clay, you can kind of shave off a few things and make it look uh, round. This was super hard because you have to kind of stretch and you have to kind of uh, blend the clay together. You, you kind of have to smear it in together. There's the yellow um, color in the background, but it might mess with your eyes a little bit. But um, you have to smear this needle eraser together. It doesn't. It doesn't really shave off. It doesn't get hard. It stays. It stays uh, movable. So it's it's kind of weird to play with. But um, it worked out. And there I am. I'm adding all the little dark areas and things like that. Uh, she has a lot of purple in her in her lips real dark lips. One thing I wanted to mention as far as when you're doing the technique whether in watercolor or anything else um, is patience. Um, that's one thing I noticed. The first like 30 minutes of, of doing this clay thing, sculpting, I wanted to give up at least five different times. I just wanted to give up because it was, it was just not coming together. It looked like a bunch of pieces and it didn't look like her. Um, but towards the middle, and, and to, especially towards the end when I added all the paint, it, it kind of looked like her. I was kind of, um, I was surprised with it, and I was just kind of, okay, well, it looked good now. But in the very beginning, I wasn't very happy, wasn't pleased. Uh, and that, that kind of happens. You have that same feeling uh, with watercolor, painting acrylic, and just about everything else. Dealing with, in reference to uh, the technique, when you're doing the fin finishing touches or, or coloring it. But... In the very beginning, it's going to look real messy, but if you just kind of remember towards the end what you're aiming for, and that the fact that this happens just about every time you watercolor, you're going to feel like it looks messy and you want to give up. Uh, if you just remember that, um, just to keep going, and at the end it'll look better. Uh, that that might motivate you. But I was I was I was about to give up uh, in the very beginning, but uh, just kept at it. So. Um, as you can tell, I'm just adding the uh, hair. I did use tissue paper, and then I added the acrylic black ink, and it absorbed that blackness. So that's what I used for the hair. 